Complete pack containing the world's number one selling home computer, a data cassette and joystick, a comprehensive teach yourself program plus three additional software packages. The Commodore family pack now available from your Commodore dealers and major retail stores. Now that's value for money. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Have you ever opened doors? I'm home. With the sound of your voice? Her car, please. Carried your medical history in your wallet. Your wife's going to be just fine. So this is where we stand on the atrium. Or attended a meeting. I really like what you guys have been doing. But, um, in your bare feet. I may have a few other ideas. You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, at and T. Let's you play hundreds more games than any video machine, plus draw, program, even do music. I'm more alive than I ever before, and my friends are knocking down my door. Cause now we're in the so much more. We're into our Commodore 64. This is the new Apple IIc. This is a computer they call Junior. You might think they're similar. But this one can only run this many programs, while the Apple IIc can run this many. The Apple comes with its disk drive built in, so it's much smaller. Even the price is small. Now, which one would you rather take home? The new Apple IIc. be friends. Yeah. I really enjoy talking to people. I would like you. Teddy Ruxpin, the storytelling bear, comes with illustrated book and cassette from Worlds of Wonder. Remember how determined your parents were to give you the gift of knowledge, no matter how many gifts it took? Today, you have a big advantage with the Apple II GS. Apple II computers are found in more schools than any other computer. Your parents gave you the world. You can give your kids the universe. Here's to the crazy ones. The rebels. The troublemakers. The ones who see things differently. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. I'm here with an average American homemaker with her own Apple personal computer. Uh, Jill, do you use your Apple for household budgeting? And... Actually, I'm working in gold futures. Oh, well, you could probably put a lot of recipes in there, huh? Eh? Mm-hmm. And you can do trend analyses, generate bar graphs. Are you really a homemaker? Well, of course. <laughs> so, Apple is the appliance of the 80s for all those pesky household chores. Hmm? I also own a small steel mill. Apple, the personal computer. A fly. I'll have a mutant fly. Hello, Yar. You'll need some protection. Ion zone. Uh-uh. Shift chroma. Intensify. Okay. Now you need some weapons. 
you have a formidable enemy, the Kutai. Watch it, Yar. He has a lethal drone and some other tricks up his sleeve. Spiral. Go. Oh, good move, Yar. Now, I have a surprise for you. A Zorlon cannon. Use it, Yar. Fire again. Got him. <laughs> That's revenge. Yar's revenge. And this could be fun. This could be a lot of fun, like asteroids. Get him. Get him. Watch it. Disintegrate. Now, let's go to deeper space. Galactic map. Okay. Sector 11. Hyperspace. Sight in. Cylon warships. Attack. Photons. Star Raiders. That's it. Star Raiders. That'll keep them on their toes. Let's see what we can come up with next. We're Atari. We have the vision. And we invented the technology to bring it home to you. As an intelligent consumer, I wanted to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' asteroids. But other companies don't make asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' missile commands. But other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari. Discover a world beyond your wildest dreams. Discover Atari. Pioneers in coin video games like Centipede, Tempest, and the Asteroids that challenge you, excite you, test you like never before. Discover the Atari that opened your eyes to the world's most popular home video games like Space Invaders, Missile Command, and Warlords. Discover the Atari that brought you a home computer truly designed for the home. Sophisticated for advanced needs, yet simple enough for your child to use. Compose music, play advanced games, manage your finances, all at the touch of a button. Discover Atari. Atari! And discover how far you can go. And guess what? Suck as a man is such a show. Scratch, scratch, just blabs about his band she's met. What an idiot. So guess what? I made this picture of me with the band. Amanda will spit blood badly when she sees this fat income. Then I'm gonna put myself in their video. So is it, because guess what? My Commodore and me goes so excellent. And Amanda's such a bogan because she won't know how I did it. So good. See ya. <laughs> I know, you think you're going to be the one person in the world who can't operate a computer. You think you won't even be able to hook it up and it'll sit on your shelf mocking you. Well, this is how easy it is to get started with the new Atari XL home computer. Once you get the whole system set up, there are over 2,000 things you can do with it. Just plug this into here. Very easy, because there's only one place it goes, and there, you're ready to go. 26 seconds. I can go again. I can do it much faster. Go again. Let's go again. Attention, residents of the globe community. Is it still the age of Aquarius? Swing on by the globe's online horoscope forum to find out the answer to that and any other groovy questions you might have. That is, as soon as you're done slipping into that sassy polyester bodysuit. This has been a message from theglobe.com, your friendly, full-service, integrated online community. What the hell was that commercial?
I've never seen a commercial for the globe like that before. Anyway, how's it going, folks? It's been a while. It's been a while since I streamed. It's been since November. This here's a couple folks in chat right now. Welcome. Uh, my office is a complete mess right now. We had a, we had a little bit of the Marie Kondo going on, so I, my closet vomited into the office, and I've started trying to organize it a little better. I haven't gotten finished with that. Maybe someday I'll have a green screen. You won't see any of that. Um, speaking of equipment, I got a few better things since the holidays. I got another camera. Actually, I had this camera before, but I decided to add it to the stream. So you're going to see, like, keyboard and desk crap going on. Got a tiny little Behringer mixer. Got a new mic. Oh, but it sounds all right. I think it sounds a lot better than the uh, Neewer mic I was working with. This is actually an, uh, an Audio Techniques 2020, which I've heard good things about. I had to do a test video before I just went live, but I was like, eh, yeah, screw it. I don't know who's going to actually watch this, because this isn't at any time that I would have normally done it in, but I haven't been doing streaming in so long that no one's probably expecting me to have gone live. So, that's cool. Playing with a few other things today. Um, yeah, so I've got the... I've got this camera. I got my little, uh, control pad here, which is... this is my, uh, do-it-yourself keyboard that I hand-wired. I can hit a button to switch scenes to that camera. Still trying to kind of figure out what to do with the, uh... the clones of these cameras. So I'm playing with that a bit. The other thing I got working last night, and also I've got the, uh, the overall stream overlay that I'm still kind of playing with. Kind of, uh, inspired by Max Headroom. Might add some more video effects to that. Let's see, I can kind of zoom in on my desktop. The other thing that I'm a little proud slash happy with how well it worked is... Alright, so here's my desktop overall. It's a 4K screen, um, which means it's terrible for trying to stream here at like... Um, I think my, my real estate on the screen right now for sharing my screen is 1455 by 1080, which is much different than 4K. But I played around with auto hotkey so that when I change windows and I go to this scene, whatever window I have in front gets automatically scaled and centered in the source. So I don't have to change scenes to have the screen share follow what I'm doing which is a lot different than what I was doing before. Like, I had six or seven scenes set up to try to automatically switch to every little application I was using, and now it's just kind of more natural and automatic. It just kind of flows with what I'm trying to do, which I think is really cool. Let's see if I remember my mute button. Hopefully that worked. Hopefully that was a mute and I didn't just cough into the mic. Trying to get a little... I don't know if slick is the right word with this, but a little more intentional with how I do all this. So this is kind of... a first tentative step towards trying to stream with a few bits of new equipment. And... I'm going to watch it when it's over and take some notes and see how well I might be doing. Oh yeah, the other cool thing about this auto hotkey script, it follows the window. So it's a little janky, you can see it kind of like skipping around a little bit, that's because the, uh, the script only checks every, uh, only checks four times a second. But that's quick enough to usually capture like a click in between windows. Not much of a transition, I almost wish, I mean that might be a thing I do next, is to maybe animate it so that the screen kind of like swoops around. I don't know, that might make people sick. Anyway. Let's go to the next song. But anyways. I think that is kind of a neat feature. So now I can just kind of start getting down to work. I can watch what I'm doing. Also, like, if I want to bump up 
up the size. I can actually just shrink the window. And you can kind of see a bigger font size. But I'm trying to see what kind of compromise I can make between comfortable working for me and uh, comfortable viewing for anyone who happens to watch this garbage. Anyway, we'll see. We can play with it around with font size and stuff. So what am I going to work on? I guess the... It's interesting, the last thing I worked on on this stream, one of the last things I worked on, was Firefox Color. And Firefox Color is a part of the Firefox Test Pilot program. Firefox Test Pilot has run its course, and the program has actually been ended. And actually, let's see... We just launched this farewell site like last week. Was it last week? Yeah, we just launched it like last week. Sad story. Test pilot's over. Uh, that's what I've been working on for about three years. What I'm starting to work, pitch in on now, though, is uh, Lockbox. I don't think Lockbox is a secret. We've, uh... I think we've already got an iOS app out, and the thing I'm starting to work on now is a Firefox add-on. And what Lockbox lets you do is it's a password manager. And it ties into Firefox. So, the first thing we've got going is we've got an iOS app. Android app is underway. Half the team's working on that. Um, and like I said, I'm starting to pitch in. Oh yeah, I guess none of this is secret at all. I'm rather new to the team, so I don't want to tell too many tales out of school, but this stuff is all working in the open. So you can see our Kanban board, you can see what we're currently working on, you can see all the repos. It's actually separate than the Mozilla organization, so you go to F Mozilla dash lockbox for our organization. And the main thing I'm starting to work on is the lockbox add-on. And it's not very far along yet, I mean it's only got like 60 commits. You can get a good, a good sense for what the team is now. It's uh, a lot of ex-test pilot people starting to work on this add-on. Now what I want to get done today on this stream, or at least make a good dent in it, is I've started working on Selenium tests. And uh, if you're not familiar with Selenium, I'm actually not that familiar with Selenium either. So this is kind of a learning project for me. So what we want to do is to be able to is to be able to test, write integration tests that actually programmatically control the browser to test the add-on. So it's gonna it's gonna walk through all the steps that a user would, but the robot's gonna do it. So the robot's gonna click on the browser and click on the buttons and enter some text, and we're gonna run it through all the user interface features. And I've got a few tests written already, but there are more to write. Let's see, what are these specific bugs? So that one's closed. I wrote that one. That's just some initial tests. Then we got, um, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Deletion and modification. So I think I'm going to try jumping into a deletion test. Oops. <laughs> I guess the danger of having it automatically zoom in on a, on a feature is that tips count as windows. Actually, I'm going to modify my auto hotkey script real quick to stop doing that. Oh, I already did it. I just need to reload it. Let's reload that. Okay. Is it still working? It's still working. Cool. I got rid of the tooltip. Yeah, and I actually posted this in a gist. Actually, I think I'm going to update that gist real quick. I shared this on Twitter, and I added a feature this morning, which is to, um, I added the, uh, window centering and auto-scaling, so you can see it automatically scales to make sure the window fits in my stream at all times, which I think is pretty cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually find my gist on GitHub since I shared it on Twitter last night and update that. Who knows? Someone will probably find it useful. 
Use Auto Hotkey to move an OBS display capture source around to track the current window. Can I edit a gist? I can't remember. Maybe I can't. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right, because it's got a it's got a hash on it, doesn't it? All right. Oh wait, wait, no, there's an edit button right here. Derp. Okay, try this. Oh, I copied instead of pasted. This is going swimmingly so far. Let's update that just. Yeah, so this actually ended up being a little simpler than I thought it would be because I haven't really done a whole lot of auto hotkey scripting before, and it's got a weird scripting language that is almost, but not quite like, say, JavaScript or whatnot. It's a pretty simple script. I um, it turns out there's a WebSockets plugin for OBS, which is kind of cool because you can send that plug in all kinds of commands to basically fully automate your OBS. Uh, and so what I did, and then I found out that AutoHotKey can tell what your current window is, and it can tell what the X and Y position and size of that window is. So one of the things I love doing is gluing bits together. So let's see, I can... Zoom this up a little bit. Yeah, I can shrink the window to make it zoom up. There we go. So, let's read this little script. Turns out somebody wrote WebSocket support for AutoHotKey. Seemed like it was kind of a hack, but it worked. Um, I can connect to my OBS via WebSocket and start sending commands. I don't have authentication enabled on WebSocket right now because that authentication process sounded a bit too complex for my uh, auto hockey knowledge so far, so I just kept it. It's on my local network, so I guess if you get in my house, you can make my OBS do things. Um, please don't come to my house and do that. Uh, so yeah, so what it does is sets a timer, checks this. It, it was originally just a thing that followed my mouse, so I guess that's why I still have it called check mouse region. Uh, I'll probably change that. But yeah, so I went from like just having the window follow my mouse around to thinking that was kind of disorienting to like finding, oh yeah, actually if I just focus on the current window, that's a pretty good like chase cam for my work. A few things in here I've got like if the monitor, if the window is off the main monitor because I have uh, another monitor over that away that you can't see and I put things that I don't want streamed on that monitor, this script will skip that. Um, it'll also do nothing if the current window hasn't changed position or size. And then there's this little bit here where this is the, the bit I got this morning. It decides which is the largest dimension. And whichever is that largest dimension, that's what's used as the uh, scaling ratio. And there's a, there's a weird little hack in here that I found, like, the, it wasn't quite working right, but I found, like, just kind of throwing a number in there, fixed it, so, uh, that's what I'm doing for now. And then down here is where the magic kind of hit, or there's, here's where or not, this isn't the magic yet, this is, once we've got the scale determined, that's, um, how far we're zoomed in and out of the window, then we can tell, I've got a display capture source in OBS, and this bit here, calculates what the X and Y position of that source should be. So it's kind of like scaling and dragging the OBS source around to affect, to cause the effect of the window being zoomed in. And then down here is, is the JSON that OBS expects, and then we send that JSON to OBS. So, bit of hackery, but I was really excited to learn that it worked. Hey, Utsby. How's it going? Hopefully this is me starting to come back to streaming. I would like to start this as a habit again. Do it on a regular basis. I kind of fell off the boat or whatever. Fell off the wagon. I don't know the expression. Fell out of the habit back in November with the holidays. And, and then a team change and then figuring out what to do after that. But I've got some work to stream now, so and i got some new equipment to stream it with. All right. So there, so in case, anyway, this is kind of a cruddy thing. I'm gonna paste it in the channel just in case 
anyone happens to want to, to get through it. It'll show up in the video later, so folks watching the VOD will see it. This is my auto hotkey script to follow my active window in OBS. So in case anyone's interested in that, you can take a peek at it. It's something I've been wanting for a while, so some folks might find it useful. All right. Oh, that's working. I'm not going to mess with that much more. So, to the work. I think the first thing I'm going to try to tackle, I'm going to take a look at uh, implementing deletion integration tests. Implement, delete, delete integration tests. Mm. I'm going to edit that real quick. There, fix the bug in the bug. It's all right. Actually, something might be handy is to show what do the integration tests look like while they're running, which is actually an interesting interaction with my script, because when I start them running, you'll see... And I think you should see the stream jump to the automatic... Um, the robot piloted browser. Oh, hey, Potch, how's it going? Nice to see you. Oh, yeah, I forgot I had Nightbot talking about a Discord server. I think I might be the only user in my Discord server. I kind of want to shut it down. Or at least just ignore it. Oh, yeah, so there you go. You can see the integration test running, and that's, uh... I'm not doing it. That's a robot piloting a browser. Out of hotkey is one of those languages that's great to do something small. Turns into a code version of 50 sci-fi blob monsters. A project grows. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Like, I actually, I'm running two auto hotkey scripts right now for this stream. One is the one that follows my window around, and the other is a few uh, buttons on my little keypad here. Working from home means I can have some streams running while I work. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's actually what got me into streaming is I would watch folks doing live coding and I'm like, hey, I could probably do that. I'm probably capable of like that much social interaction sometimes. Hope things are going well for you. Pouch here, uh, was a colleague of mine at Mozilla, and now he is at Glitch. My heart Glitch. I've got a lot of... it's kind of the thing I reach for for little projects these days. Alright, so those integration tests finished. Yeah, they take a while. They take like 20 seconds, I guess. It's not too bad. They could be better. So I'm gonna add a deletion test. Where are our tests? You know, here's a good way to start. I'm gonna close all these directories because I'm getting lost in them. Under test, and also, for what it's worth, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed, it, it's the lockbox add-on repository that I'm working from, and I'm starting to take a crack at bug 55 or issue 55. So our tests live under here. We've got some unit tests. Unit tests, just to be a pedantic, unit tests run the code against the code, kind of in isolation. So there's no user interface hooked up. So you can kind of test function by function, the ins and outs of that. But what I'm looking at are the integration tests. And it's kind of early days for these in this project. So they're all piled into one big file. And I don't need this. I'm not editing that right now. Man, we're in the middle of a snow apocalypse here today and it is super dry in my house. So I'm probably gonna end up sounding like a frog. I have to keep muting because I'm gonna cough my lungs out and you don't wanna hear me slurping water. Alright, so this is my 
suite of integration tests right now. One of the interesting things I'm playing with, I guess in Selenium, there's a pattern of creating classes to, to encapsulate a page, and I haven't done that here yet. I'm thinking I might get around to doing that. Instead, all I've done right now, I just kind of have made a quick and dirty inventory of um, selectors that will pluck different bits out of the page that's being tested. So this is for like filling in form fields, pressing buttons, things like that. And the reason why I've got them all in one pile here is because if the user interface changes, we can change the selectors right here. Uh oh, oh, there we go. My Vim was slightly frozen for a second there. Okay. And we got some testing data. We got what else we got? Okay, so here's where the tests start to come in. We got a few utility functions here. I'm probably going to keep fiddling with the window size and things while I'm streaming just because A, I can, and uh, B, I'm still sorting it out. So, all right, what are some of our tests so far? Oh, here's the other thing I should do. Oh, what do I have open? I've got, uh, yeah, I've got a thing over here. I've got a window off screen I'm going to bring on screen. Is it already on screen? No, it's not already on screen. There it is. One of the things I found frustrating with Selenium is figuring out how to get interactive with it. Because I want to kind of fiddle with it. I'd like to write some of my tests incrementally, like figure out, okay, what is like, like open the browser inspector, see what elements are on the page, what do I need to touch? And it's a little hard to get the whole kind of the rig set up. So what am I doing here? So one of the things I was looking at, let's see. This is, this is really, uh oh, script error in my auto hockey script. Go away, I keep running. You're still working, right? Yeah, okay. One of the things I started doing is I kind of just came up with a scratch pad commands that I started running to get a node get a node REPL, get like a node command line going so I could poke at selenium. Jiminy, so many coughings today. Okay, so one of the things I'll do, and I don't know, this might be useful to, to see me play with. So I open a shell. And also all the this is all on Windows, so this actually works pretty well on Windows. So I go to my testing directory. I start up actually I start up Babel node because all of our stuff is compiled with Babel. Do I have that command line? Yeah, so I start up uh, a Babel node. And what Babel node is, is it's just kind of like a node with uh, Babel transforms, like in front of the, the REPL. What? what node version do I have? I think I might have. Well, that seems like the right node version. I've seen this message before and I'm trying to remember what caused it. What is our node version on this on this uh, project? No, yeah, that's the right node version. Cannot find module, yada yada yada. Really? Maybe I did, um... I swear I actually had this installed at one point. I... I was just doing this yesterday. So I know this works. Of course, once I, once I start to stream, I'm gonna run into all the, uh... I'm going to anger the live coding gods. But, okay. Cannot 
find module. Yeah, I'm gonna Google it real quick. I'm sure I, I, I ran into this before and I fixed it. And I don't remember what I did to fix it. And I find module battle node message. Hmm. Well, it's definitely a thing someone else has seen. Using the wrong version of Python. What? <sighs> hmm. Babel CLI. That's not what I want. Babel node. These are old bugs too. Did it move the Babel CLA? Like I'm not trying to transform code right now. I just want the uh, the REPL, the uh, interactive execution loop. It's annoying because I was just doing this. The current version of Babel, are we using the at prefixed ones yet? We are. Okay, well, can you do this in NPX? Oh! Derp. Okay, well, never mind. Maybe that's what I have to do. Okay, let's try this. Okay, okay. Launch Babel node. That's a. That's a interactive node interpreter with Babel in front of it. What I'm doing is I'm trying to set it up so that I can tinker with Selenium kind of live. And now I kind of get started doing it. it was, this is very grungy. I've got some kind of startup commands. And what I really should do is wrap this into a module or something that I can do something with. Eesh. Okay, well that's not right. That's the whole reason I'm trying to run Babel node, is so it does import statements and whatnot. I am probably doing this fully wrong, <laughs> but it's the, the series of steps I stumbled into that worked. Did I install it globally? I did not. Yeah, what's frustrating is I was just doing this, like just yesterday. It was, in fact, it's in my command line history, so I don't know why it's not working. This is a long loop of this song. All right. I mean, this is, this is... Babel node from the Babel project. This is what they recommend. Let me do this real quick. Install in the project. Heard a noise outside, and it turns out it's my neighbor trying to dig himself up from under the like foot of snow we got in the last day or so. Crap, I guess I had to install it. I thought MPX just did that for you. Alright, well, I did not want to cut that. Let me copy of that. Thank you. Well, let me try that. Alright, cool. So I think what that part of what that did is the is what these commands do. It, it, the web extension, which is going to be built into, which is going to be pre-installed into the browser that will open. There, 
it goes in. The browser is opening. There's the browser. This is the browser that has the uh, automation hooks in it now. Yeah, web console. You'll need that immediately, actually. All right, so the next thing I'll tend to do, this is also a little tricky because these are all like, the thing that, that's a little cruddy about this Babelnode shell is it doesn't support async await. And all of these are promise-based. Yeah, I should spend a little time, maybe this afternoon or later this afternoon. Actually, it's already afternoon. I should spend some time wrapping this up into an easier-to-use little package, if only for myself. But the reason I'm doing all this is now this part. All right, so. What just happened that you didn't see because it's off screen, or it's in another window, is this. So when I ran this last command here, it opened up the uh, bookmarks management page from my add-on, which looks like so. And now I can do things like, um, what is the class name of this add button? Or what's an ID in this add button? Turns out it's right here, add item button. And that's important because I need to, I need to figure out, I'm kind of like, I know I can just look at the code, but I also just kind of want to poke around at the uh, rendered artifact to see what can I hook onto with these tests. And so I can do things like this selector. Add item button corresponds to add item button in the browser. And so I can use this selector in my test to say, get a hold of that add item button, click it. The only problem is, and the reason why I went through all this crap in the uh, in Babel node is because usually, otherwise, I kind of have to write this code blind and then run the test. And it goes through a bunch of setup and it takes a little while. If I do it interactively through this, this shell that I've kind of like pre-configured, I can just kind of mess around. And then once the stuff I'm messing around with looks about right, I can I can express that as a test and then see if the test did the right thing. And I've been finding that more productive than just trying to run right tests. I'm just kind of blind. Okay, so what I want to do now, and I've kind of puttered around for most of 45 minutes, I'm going to start trying to write a deletion test. So I'm just going to go over here to my... And the thing that's kind of cool about this now is that I can both manually operate the browser and operate it from code. So I'm going to add a bookmark, or not a bookmark, a password, a login. Let's say, yeah, food at example.com. I use <laughs> Exasimple. Ex ex Username, uh, foo. Password is, um, bleh. See, my fancy password is bleh. Create the entry. The entry is created. I want to delete it. I can do that manually pretty easily. I can see that that button says delete. I can click it. It'll delete it. But how do I make a robot see it? Let's inspect the button. All right. Well, this is kind of annoying. Let's change the window size a little bit, maybe, so you can see this. Do -do -do -do. So this is the deletion button. Because of the way we're doing CSS, there are all these CSS scoped, or scoped CSS modules. And I'm not messing with those too much yet, so my know-how with them is a little limited at the moment. But what it does mean to me as a tester right now is there's no easy handle on this delete button. 
There's no nothing in here that says delete other than the text of it, which I guess I could use as a handle, except that that's going to be localized. Meaning the text is going to change depending on what language you're in. And I'm trying to make these tests language independent. I could probably hook onto one of these generated class names, but I'm pretty sure those are going to change too. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a handle to this button that doesn't change. And um, actually, I think I might put it here in the ID. Actually, that looks like a bug. We shouldn't have these blank IDs. So, two things. I'm going to fix that. And I'm going to add an ID, I think, for this button. It's either an ID or a class name. I'd add a class name if there's going to be multiple delete buttons. I'll add an ID if I think it's going to be a singleton on the page. It's, I think it's going to be a singleton on the page, so I might just change the ID. All right, let's dig into the code. I think it's under widgets. Yeah, there's a button widget here. Oh, yeah, we don't want that. I wonder if that's going to fix things. The other annoying thing, though, the other annoying thing, since I just set up this shell, every time I edit the extension, I have to redo a bunch of what I just did for setup in the, in the shell. So at some point, that annoyance alone is going to make me make this more automated. All right, so I think if we make it a null, it just won't show that. Actually, no, I wonder if I can just, I can reload that web extension. But I think I know what I can do. Let's see, I'm gonna try something here. So when we run integration tests, there's a pre-integration step, and what it does is it does npm run build. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. Let's pick up my changes. And actually, I can actually just run that. I can just run that. And the reason why I'm just running that is it's got, uh, it sets an environmental variable and I'm lazy. I didn't feel like copy pasta. Okay, there. The extension is built. Let's install an add on from file. Can we do that? It wasn't installed through um, about debugging, so I'm a little interested to see if this will actually work. Hmm, it does not appear to have built a jar. A lot of this is just kind of stumbling towards a desired outcome. And at some point I'll actually make this more efficient. I'm also a noob at Selenium, so this is all very annoying. chunk of this is me reading some docs and being impatient and just trying things and probably discovering all the absolute wrong ways to do it that nonetheless work and actually have me stumbling towards a desired outcome and eventually I'll figure out the right way to do it or at least a better way to do it. Alright, so this is our management page. There we go. Got rid oh, wait a minute, I did. I fixed the ID part. I didn't actually add an ID for this delete button. Okay, so back to the code. 
I fixed the button widget, but in particular. I need to add an ID to that delete button. So I think it says under edit item details.js. Yeah, so okay, where's our delete button? Save, cancel. Actually, what I want is item details. There's a delete button. Okay, well. So now that button's gonna have an idea of delete, but actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it even more kind of specific. Uh oh, my music player crashed. You could do better than that. Yeah, and my, uh, my script still has some issues with window sizing, like when I click on this window, it is very ugly and you only see the middle of it. Which is a bummer. Alright, so that's going to have an ID of item delete. Actually, you know what I think I might try doing? Here's what I'm gonna do, let's do this. This might break. I'm just trying to find an easy way to reload the add-on when I make changes to it. And, I, and there is a way to do it. In the about debugging screen, you go about colon debugging. And you can temporarily load an add-on but I'm wondering if it's going to be with a different ID or something. So there's the add-on, the add-on is installed. Can I do this? Uh, browsing context has been discarded. Yeah, so, oh well. But, got an ID now, at least. Okay. Fumbling towards doing the right thing here. But yeah, at some point I will, I think, build this into some kind of script that starts a REPL for me. Just through sheer annoyance. It hasn't annoyed me so much yet because I spend more time tinkering with the DOM in the test than running these steps over and over. There we go. Okay, we're back in the management view. Let's add an entry. Have an entry. That entry should have an ID. That entry does have an ID. Okay, cool. Or the button has an ID. So I'll come back to my code here. Let's open up that test. Okay, we're gonna add a new selector here. Lead item button by ID item delete. I guess I'm not consistent with my naming here. Oh, uh, well, I'll get back to that. Maybe I'll change its name to delete item button. Oh well, delete item button. So we got a selector, I got the button. I already have some testing code that gets me to the point of having an item, so I'm just going to kind of follow that. So, Alright, where are we at here? I'm doing this from the management page, so... The scribe management page is the kind of sub-suite for this. It can... It... Can delete an existing item. So what I want to do here is going to be kind of weird. I'm going to say 
I'm gonna actually copy pasta some of the ad test. While removing the actual like test parts. And I might dry this up at some point by putting this into like a, a reasonable function, but whatever. I just wanna see if I can get it to work. Okay, so we click the plus button to add a new item. That's a thing that I did manually, but now I can do it automatically. And I do this by saying, um, there's some helper functions in here too, but what I do, and this is a tricky, this is a thing I found tricky in Selenium. Selenium can be really fast. And things that you don't notice, don't notice changing on the web page. Selenium hits. So buttons that appear immediately to your eye might take a few milliseconds to show up. So when you're doing these interactions, you have to wait for everything. So like for instance, when this test runs, the browser is like getting into a state. Like, like I've, I've opened up a page, I've maybe put some test data in, and it's going to probably take noticeable milliseconds for the page to get into the state that I want to test. So the first thing I do here is wait for the add button to show up. And I've got a, I've got a thing up at the top. This is a helper function. It's very simple. It just says wait until this element is located by this selector that I've given it. And there's a wait delay and I've, I'm just using a second for that. So it's going to wait up to one second for that add button to show. Well, you know, we don't have to test that. We test this and another thing. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait for the add button to show up, click it. And what that's going to do is give me the new entry form. So since that we, that's what we expect to have happen, we're going to wait for that form to show up. I'm not going to test that here. I'm going to simplify this a little bit because I do all this in another test. The other thing I could do here is go behind the scenes and set up the underlying data so that the item is already there. Uh, I'm tempted to do that, but one of the things that we talked about in one of our last stand-ups is to avoid cheating like that and to have these integration tests fully just use the UI as a black box, which I, which I think is a good, good point. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is, now that I've found the form, I'm going to grab the relevant form fields. I'm going to handle on those. So that's where, if I, as a human, I'm going to click that plus button, I'm going to see this show up, and I say, oh yeah, here's the form. And I'm going to say, okay, I got the address box, the username, the password. As a human, I see those, and I know I can move the mouse, I can click on them. As a robot, I have to tell it, use these selectors to find them. So that's the next thing. It's, it's going to await for each of those to show up. Now what it's going to do is it's going to send, this is, this is interesting, because I'm used to using like the DOM where you would just say like value equals. So you would just set the DOM element, the like input field value. But what I'm doing here through, through Selenium, through the testing, is sending keystrokes to the field, which I find that interesting. So, okay. It sends the, sends the keystrokes to each of those fields, then it submits it. Again, by looking for the create entry thing, which I named new item form submit, clicks that. Okay, so far so good. I gotta test. This bit here fills out the form, adds a new item. Now what I wanna do is find it in the side, is find it, click on it, then delete it, right? So if I find it in the sidebar there. And this is what I do a lot of times too. I think a lot of people do this. Rather than trying to write the perfect, dry, non-repeating code code first, I actually do quite a lot of copy pasta before distilling it down to like fewer functions. Shift to kitty. 
Okay. So this bit is going to wait for this to show up here. Actually, what I need to do, I think, let's see this. Oh, I know. I need a different selector here. I need this selector. This item container. This item container. Yes. That's the selector I want. That's what I want to do, so now that I've added it, I want to click on it. Similar test down here, I think. Yeah, wait until missing. So I'm gonna say. So I think that's my test. Pretty simple test, actually. Let me see if that works. I'm gonna run the whole in a creation suite. Actually, the next thing I'm gonna probably do is look around and, uh. Actually, I've got a problem in the code. Yeah, I'm missing test data. Grumble, grumble. That's gonna cause the test to fail already. Let's just save that. Let's cancel that. Yeah, my test has already failed. Actually, these integration tests are pretty fast. Maybe I shouldn't have to mess around with that whole interactive shell I just set up. And there go my tests. Oh, I forgot the uh, confirmation. Bummer. Okay. Yeah, I should have done this when I was uh, playing around with it. My hand. The answer is a confirmation. Does this button have an ID? This button does not have an ID. Okay. So, what do we do with that? Okay, so, edit item details, item details, yes. Let's CSS. No. Let me bring my test back. Okay. Where's the dialogue come up? Okay. 
Okay, I'm trying to fit. So what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to find where does this delete modal get summoned? And um, how can we add an ID to this button? Confirm dialog. Widgets dialog box. Confirm dialog. That's interesting. And I'm also still kind of learning the structure of this app. A lot of this was written before I got here. I thought maybe it'd be in here, in the uh, app component. Any mention? No, there's no mention of dialogues in here at all. Huh. Maybe it's under current selection. Current selection. Do you have a dialogue? You don't have a dialogue. Huh. Modal root. Okay, what is a modal root? Modal root containers modals. Okay. Containers modals. Oh, that's where the message is coming from. Modal delete LTN ID. Okay. I see. I'm actually like looking for the words delete and delete this entry, but I think they might just be buried in the, uh, the localization strings. So we're looking for dialog box. Distracted. Hey kitty, what you doing? Don't knock things over. Come on. There you go. Now, here's probably where the overhead cam pays off as the cat pays a visit. Unless he just wants to drink my coffee. Don't drink coffee, cat. See, this is very generic, so I think one of the things I want to try to do... Uh, is just add some kind of hook to this so I can grab this button. I'm just gonna do this. I think this will be alright. This is, this is kind of janky, but...
Okay, let's try this again. Oh no, my music player crashed again. Uh, bug you. Yeah, we don't want to do bug you. Cancel that for now. Restart playing, please. Cool. Let's remove that. I'm just going to go ahead and... Do this. Load temporary add-on. And what's great about this is I can build the add-on. Build the add-on and then temporarily load it into Firefox. Explore the DOM, yada yada. What's with that? I guess I never used that, huh? I never actually literally used that, but I do want to wait for that DOM element. Okay, so the build finished. I'm gonna load it. I do not want to open that, I want to open our management page. Delete this. Now let's see. I tried adding a data dash name to each of these buttons. Ah, looks like it got there. Because I didn't want to add an ID necessarily. I don't know that I want to add a class name. Maybe I should add a class name instead. Should add a class name instead of this like data name thing. Okay, yeah, let's do that instead. Let's say uh, class name equals. awkward. And then down here I'm going to say confirm, cancel. Let's rebuild that. Nice that linting went through without a hitch. Build is complete. Alright, so now here's the, the nice part about using about debugging. I can say reload. And the add-on is reloaded with my changes. So, what does this button look like now? Cool. There's a class name. Right? Yeah. Dialog cancel, dialog confirm. So, so, so. Back to my test real quick. Delete item button. So this initial click brings up the confirmation dialog. Now, I'm going to say delete confirm delete dialog right now. This is a fairly, I think it's a fairly generic dialog. Yeah, it's just a confirm dialog. So why don't we do this? Um, confirm Confirm, confirm dialog. Confirm but button. And we're gonna say bye CSS. Um hmm. you know what actually that hmm. let's just do this for now. I'm I'm looking over here at the dialog box and there's another one of those like generated class names, and I wish it was just dialog box, but I think for now, dialog confirm is unique enough. Config on my keep on the say config. Just for the sake of completeness. Cancel. So now I can 
let's say I click that. That brings up the dialogue. I'm gonna wait for that dialogue button to appear. You know, for the sake of conciseness here, I'm gonna just shorten this. Now it should be missing, right? If I click that, it goes away. Yep, okay. Now, let's see. Let's see if my integration suite passes. Couple lint errors, maybe I'll fix those real quick. test run. My test passed. Sweet. Okay. It's a pretty simple test. It's a pretty minimal test too. I, I, in this test, I did not check the backend data. I just added an item, then clicked all the buttons to delete the item, and then checked that the item no longer appears on the screen. This is very different than the unit tests. The unit tests will actually check the data. This is just checking the, um, the visuals, I guess. Loving the new stream scenes. Cool. Yeah, I put a, I'm trying to put a little work into getting, uh, getting it to work more like I want to. I'm also still kind of playing around with the, um, the, the frame. Glad you like it. Actually, with that, having gotten that test built, I'm going to take a pit stop. Um, be right back. it is to get started with the new Atari XL home computer. Once you get the whole system set up, there are over 2,000 things you can do with it. Just plug this into here. Very easy, because there's only one place it goes, and there, you're ready to go. 26 seconds. I can go again. I can do it much faster. Go again. Let's go again. Here's to the crazy ones. The rebels. The troublemakers ones who see things differently. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Now in a home family pack, a family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer, a data cassette and joystick, a comprehensive teach yourself program plus three additional software packages. The Commodore family pack now available from your Commodore dealers and major retail stores. Now that's value for money. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Adventure is on the horizon. Stanley's going buggy, Mario Brothers have their hands full, and Donkey Kong's going ape. It's rump seas for Popeye, and Snoopy's gotta get on the ball. But you can help. You got Nintendo Game & Watch. That's pocket power. Widescreen or multi-screen games you can play indoors or out. They tell you the score and even the time. They're pocket power. They're Game & Watch. 14 in all, only from Nintendo. 
Odyssey, video game fun, computer keyboard challenge, the entrance to an alternate world of fire-breathing dragons, hard-hitting sluggers, arcade wizards, outer space wizards. More than 40 games in all, Odyssey, the excitement of a game, the mind of a computer, all for the price of an ordinary video game, Odyssey. The most earth-shattering deep dug. The most realistic just. Whole position at its best. Only the Atari 5200 Super System plays them. Moon Patrol with arcade graphics. Real sports baseball. You're out. Only on Super System. 2600 games, the adapter plays them all. The Atari 5200 Super System. Its only competition is you. You know, the best part of telling you about the new Atari XL home computers is that I get to try them out. They sent me everything. I feel like a kid in a computer store. And the best thing about what you see here is that everything works with everything else. In other words, it's a system. But a system that's no big deal to use. Look, with any computer, you have to learn a few new things. But Atari is going to a lot of trouble to make it easier for you. See, it's testing itself. It comes with its own basic language that's built in and uses plain, simple English. And all these extras let you do more, but only when you're ready. After I get to play with them for a while, I'm gonna show you some of the more than 2,000 ways an Atari computer can help you organize and learn and just have fun. Oh, here's a box I didn't get to yet. Well, maybe next time. Alan Alda. Attention, residents of the globe. Okay, no, this commercial is just creepy. We're going to jump back into it. If I can remember what button does what. There we go. We're back into it, I think. I'm going to play around with those commercials, too. I hope I don't get some kind of copyright strike for them right away. I, uh, back when I streamed in uh, October, I had, like, some kind of Halloween mix on while I was starting up the stream and uh, on my uh, Be Right Back scenes. Oh, this isn't what I'm working on. Actually, this I should show off at some point, but maybe not right now. I actually, so the um, the overlay that I've got that I'm playing with right now, this is like, that's like kind of transparent or whatever. That's all SVG. So I've been kind of hacking away at some like hand-coded SVG to make my stream overlay. Got some more work to do with that. And it's hosted on Glitch, if you happen to want to see it. It's really, and actually, like, I, want, I want to get into it some more because you can actually do SVG as a React component. So I could have an SVG overlay for my stream. Oh, yeah, let's restart the music. I could have an SVG overlay for my stream that is dynamically updated via React. So that could be another cool project to play with on stream. But not today. I gotta get some work done. I got a little work. I've gotten a little work done. My test passed. What all did I need to do for that issue? Oh, cancel delete. So I need to cancel delete also. And there's probably a few other things I want to roll in here. It would be really cool if by the end of my stream I've got at least one pull request out of this stuff. So the next one is cancel delete. So I guess it's good that I went ahead and added that uh, dialogue cancel class name. So because that's the next thing I need to do. All right then. You know what I'm gonna do? Because it's already bugging me. I'm gonna take. Let's do this real quick. Let's take that um, add item thing and uh, separate it into a reusable function, because I've already done it twice. I'm gonna do it a third time now. So a third time, I get a little more dry. I'm literally just doing all this. No, actually, let's do this.
anybody play uh, Chaos Engine back in the day? I used to love this game. Alright, so I just extracted that. And I'm gonna undo my copy pasta up here. Which is what I probably should have done the first time. Just a little bit of juggling. So again, what I'm setting up to do here is to say it can cancel deleting, basically. I've never played this game, Gimmick. But I kind of want the cart. It's uh, an NES game, but what's awesome about this song and this game is that this NES cart came with a custom FM synthesis chip. Which is why the music sounds unusually awesome for an NES game. Hopefully I didn't just break everything. Now really the only change in this test is that it won't be missing, it'll still be there. So I could probably um, reduce this down. A bunch of copy pasta, but I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce that copy pasta because it's 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 already gonna bother me. code share between these two tests. And the code is kind of ugly. At some point I think I'm going to run prettier on this and it'll kind of tidy things up for me. Alright, that looks okay to me. Run some lint on it. Nope. Okay, what I break? New item form submit line 25. Probably forgot a comma. Intonation. Yeah, I kill a comma. I know how I did that. That is not defined. Oh, I see. The song is super bouncy. This is one of my favorite action RPGs on NES, actually. And it just... I think became available for Switch through the um, the Nintendo Online Switch Online thing, and you can play the NES games. I probably shouldn't delete those lines. Oh well. Okay, Lint worked fine. Let's run the whole integration suite. What I should be doing is running the suite limited to just the tests that I want to run, but 
place while I'm developing them. But it, it, it runs quick enough. So far, so good. Hey, my tests passed. That's awesome. And I'm pretty sure they tested what I meant to test. <laughs> pretty sure they tested what I meant to have them test. That's cool. I guess one way to, to, to really test it is to break the code and make sure that the test breaks. Um, hmm. Let me do that real quick. Trust my own work sometimes. So, let's go find the code where the uh, dialogue is brought in, which I had just found, and I think I just closed the split that had it open, so of course, it's missing. Yeah, why don't we do this real quick? This is kinda gonna break things. This should fail the test. So instead of deleting initial, in, instead of initiating a delete, it's gonna initiate an edit, which should be unexpected and should break the integration tests. This is the integration tests. I'm probably just gonna throw my computer in the ocean. It is kind of neat to watch the uh, the robot piloted browser show up on my stream. Oh no, my chiptunes player crashed again. This is crashing a lot today. I should check and see if um, the author has any fixes I should know about. Because I didn't write this chiptune player. Okay, so my uh, integration tests did indeed fail, and I can undo my breakage. This is the thing I do sometimes, I don't know if every, maybe everyone does it, but every now and then, just to make sure my tests are doing the right thing, I'll intentionally break my code. So I'm like double checking that I tested the thing that I meant to test. Test again to be sure. So far, so good. Cool. So actually, maybe, maybe, maybe I call this a uh, pull request. Let me, th let me think about it. Let me look at some other stuff real quick. Because there was some other stuff we were gonna do. I was gonna do with all this. So. Um, add new item. Can I add a new item? Common item delete. It can delete an item. It can cancel. It can cancel deleting an item. And the door hanger. It lists logins. Yeah, that's fine. Displays login. Oh, I know what it is. Down here. Was it down here? No, it wasn't down here. There's a bit where I'm using the underlying browser API to check for a, a password and a password manager. And the feedback I got from the team is stop doing that. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Yeah, so actually maybe I'll just delete this. I don't think it needs to be there. Yeah, because this bit here, I'm actually like, inspecting the underlying data store for the the login and we want to keep this test limited to actual um, user interaction stuff hi there hey how's it going I 
guess what I can do now is I can review what changes I've made. You know what I actually got like I should have done already? Should have started off in a branch, because this is issue what? 55. Issue 55. Integration delete test. Do you need to learn programming to create a video game? Um, that doesn't hurt. But. There are a lot of non-programming tools you can use to make a game. Depends on what you mean by game. So. Let's say you had uh, Mario Maker on Wii U. You can make levels for Mario. You don't need to know how to how to do programming. Um, there's a lot of visual tools. I'm pretty sure I haven't used it in a while, but I know like I think Unity, Unreal Engine, they kind of have some like visual tools to make game stuff. Overall, you probably do need to know programming though. There's a lot of interesting stuff without knowing programming. You, you might need to have a programming mindset, like to know how to set up triggers and things and scripting. You can do level design. Oh, I gotta get this out of my git diffs. Package lock is my bane. Screw you, package lock. Okay, what are my actual changes? Uh, it's still a babble node. I don't really want that in my commit. Let's get that out of that commit real quick. I'm using it, but I don't actually want to submit it to the project. Where is it? Oh yeah, there it is. Let's just delete that. Screw you, package lock. Did I make any change to the package? Mm, you know, I don't actually want to make that change either. It might be a good change to make, but I don't want to make it as part of this commit. Let's do this. Those are not part of my part of the work I'm actually trying to get done. Okay, what are we left with? That looks like the things I wanted to change. All right, what did I do? So I added an ID to the uh, delete button so I'd have a handle on it. Fixed a little bug in the button widget where IDs were coming as coming up as blank strings instead of just not appearing at all. Um, I'm also adding a class name, a predictable class name to buttons in the dialog box so I can get a handle on them in tests. This might actually be a case where I can grow the font in this window comfortably. There we go. Alright, what else did I do? Okay, since I added those handles to things... Actually, this flows in pretty neatly. Since I added those handles to things in the DOM, I can create selectors for them in the test. Um, yeah, this is a this is a weird get diff, but this little bit here shows where I extracted a common add item function. And I added a... Uh, Common delete item function, which is kind of the preamble to these two tests. Okay. It's actually not not a very big commit. It's less work than I thought it would be. Alright, let's um let's commit this real quick and then push it up to my repo. We're gonna say that this fixes issue 55. And then item deletion integration tests. Also, stop 
checking logins API store for added players. Does that sound like the right description? Let's see. I think so. Let's review it one more time. I might add a few more little details in my commit message there to uh, describe what I did. Just note that I added the uh, class names and ID, which we can do with a git amend. Um, git amend. Wait. No, 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 not git amend. Git check and amend. Herp. Okay. Bug fix to button with. IDs and predictable class names to confirmation dialog buttons. That's not about right. Cool, okay, so let's push this. Push that up to get up. Show up here. Yeah, there we go. Showed up as a comment in the uh, in the issue. Maybe I'll propose it as a PR now. I'm gonna review one more time, so I'm not entirely embarrassed in front of my team. Still playing around with like window sizes and font sizes and trying to see what might be viewable on a stream. All right, yeah, that looks like everything I expected to be in there. No stray additions. <laughs> trying not to. Uh, pick up on the stream too much. I'm just having all the issues today. Alright, so this looks like the code I was expecting. Yeah, let's do it. That's interesting because this project does have like a pull request template of things that we're supposed to include. So this is the this is the, the commit message that I supplied, but there's like more stuff down here to remind us what to add. I'm already adding some of these things. This is another NES game I kind of want to get. We don't need any of this. Don't need any of that. How's that look? Let me do this. that up a little bit. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Let's create a pull request. Look at that. First stream of the year, and I managed to create a pull request within uh, an hour and 44 minutes. Go me. There's one thing I want to comment on, though. just went ahead and deleted this code that checked for the data in API. Not really necess necessary and since the test already looks for the visible evidence. in oops 
request it and stand up. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, this was actually a request to whatever stand ups that I take out that code because this should only be checking things that a human could see basically because we have unit tests for the rest. Okay, small, small thing. Got that pull request. I wonder if I should review some pull requests before moving on to my next thing. You know what? I will do that. So I got a pull request for this bug. I'm hoping before the end of stream, maybe. I mean, it's it's 4 p.m. here. I'm probably going to stream for another hour, at least. I'm just kind of shaking the bugs out of my uh, revised streaming setup. So I might as well keep going. The other issue I would like to attack is uh, modification tests. Okay, so I don't have any, uh, I do have tests for adding an entry, so this might be half done. I don't have tests for editing an entry. Maybe I'll do that real quick and then I'll review pull requests. Yeah, why don't we add another test real quick? Chaos engine again. Mm. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Next song, please. Eh, I'm gonna do that one. I heard that one today. And I crashed my player again. Bummer. I wonder if there was a bug fix for this. It's a really cool chiptune player. Fixes crash when parsing SNES files. I am crashing. Maybe I need a fix. I'm gonna put that off to tonight though. I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> Cause I would like to get some more work, work, work done. Work, work done. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna see, uh, see about these, doing these modification tests and then maybe spend the like tail end of the stream doing pull requests. merge this next bit of work into my previous pull request. Yeah, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cancel this pull request. I'm just going to keep piling it in. Just occurred to me that the modification tests for issue Would probably fit well into this PR2, so I'm going to close it for now. So yeah, 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 let's do that real quick. Let's delete that branch for a minute. Then we can kill two issues with one PR. I mean, it's, it's it's not always the best to do that, but but it's very related work. Because here's the thing, is, is I um, I was thinking about it for a second, and I, I pulled this common add item function out. I'm going to want to do the same thing for the modification test. So let's just keep this, uh, this change set rolling. Okay, can delete them. Cancel deleting. Hit. And modify an existing item. It's gonna be an async function. Nope, 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 I accidentally pasted in there. I use this expected structure a lot. Maybe I can pull it out. Yeah, let's do this. Mm, maybe not. What? I use that data over and over. Let's do this real quick. Yeah, 
It's just that I use this data over and over and I've redefined it a couple times. This game even looks like, but I like the music from it. Yeah, see, so here's another place where I used it. I seem to flop between two different states. I go from like, eh, screw it, I'm just gonna copy and paste code all over the place, and then I'll flip over into a state of must edit must reduce code. I think it has to do when I'm like putting off doing the next thing. All right. First step in modifying an existing item is having an, ex having an existing item. I bet you I'm gonna have to go through and add class names to the modification buttons. That's alright, I've already done it a few times, so it's fresh in my memory. So we create an item. So we've got an edit button. Does the edit button have a class name? No. Alright. So. I added the uh, item delete ID here earlier. And I need to add an item edit button. ID. Oh, and this is the space where I wanted to make it more consistent because I call the add button add item button. And I call the delete button item delete. Maybe I'll consistify those. That's not the word. Um, well, make them consistent. So I'm looking for item details, right? Item details, there's the ID. Item delete. Hey, Smurf T. Pretty happy new year. Change teams. Test pilot has ended. That was kind of sad. We're gonna a totally different project now. We're gonna unlock box which is a uh, password manager in Firefox. Let's change delete to edit. Edit item button. Yeah, we're kind of shuffling a few things around him as a... interesting year. <laughs> In part because I don't entirely know what all we're shuffling around. But I'm still here. Which is cool. I figured I'd start trying to stream again now that I got a pretty steady stream of work to do. Alright, did I add that button? I, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't rebuild the, uh, the extension. rebuild the extension. And it rebuilt. That's cool. Let's reload the add-on. It's funny because I spent like the first, what, half hour of the stream trying to set up this, uh, this interactive shell so I could play with uh, Selenium interactively and it turns out I'm not actually doing that. Maybe lesson learned. Then maybe I don't need that. It's like a Dumbo's feather. I don't need to do that. 
Spotify. Hit it. Alright, that's got an ID now. It matches this ID. Cool. So. song I'm gonna hear right now. I need to add some more favorites. It's been a while since I streamed. Let's listen to that right now. Alright. We can modify an existing item, so we wait to add the item. And then we should be able to find... Let's do this. We're going to select the item. And we're going to click the edit button. Was Lockbox part of Test Pilot or is it a new thingy? It actually was part of Test Pilot, which is also kind of why it was a uh, semi natural thing for me to slide over into. Yeah, it was originally a Test Pilot experiment. And it was one of the experiments that will be surviving Test Pilot to continue forward. It's a... Uh, it's kind of a neat project. It's a... Uh, uh, oops, I did not want to do the entire document. Uh, Lockbox is going to work with the password manager already in Firefox and the sync function of Firefox accounts. But you'll be able to take your passwords into... Um, Ideally, it'll work in other browsers, but also an iOS app and an Android app. So we're kind of trying to like expand the reach of uh, password management from Firefox into like other spaces. It'll be interesting because I know that password managers are not a new idea. So we'll see how well we do making a Mozilla flavored one. Or a Firefox flavored one, actually. Or a Lockbox flavored one. I don't know. We'll have our own flavor. Alright, so what happens when I hit edit? I bet you these fields don't have handles on them. Oh, wait. They do! Oh, because this is just a variant of the ad form, and I already test the ad form, so cool. Okay. So I can grab some of this code, actually. I'm gonna copy pasta some of this, which actually. I can reduce some of this boilerplate. Actually, no. No, 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 no. There's a thing I want to do. I think I did this already. Edit item form. Which I don't have a selector for. Let me add a selector for that. There's a new item form, but there's also an edit item form. So there, I got a selector for edit item form. Can add a new item. Okay, so what I want to do... I'm gonna, uh, it's going to be code that looks very similar to this. New item form submit. That's probably another selector I should... Hmm. Let's reduce these. <laughs> Vim for life, yeah. Vim for my life, anyways. I've been using it an embarrassingly long time. I 
did use Emacs for a little while. And then I made myself use Vim. And I've used it ever since. Every now and then I start to use VS Code for Adam. I might give VS Code another swing. So I just generified that, um, that code a little bit. Let's do this. Since we are editing the, the item. Now this doesn't test any kind of validation. Form validation. We don't. We don't even really have that edit that implemented yet. But these are kind of baseline tests. There we go. I could probably generify this code at some point. Let's not get out of ourselves. Okay, so we submit this. Now we gotta test that the edits took hold. And I think we can do this. Assignability, but never used it. Okay, yeah, we don't actually use it anymore. That's part of the code I got rid of. Hey, thanks for the follow, Lapsa. Hopefully, you'll see me keep doing this. This is my first stream since November. So, hopefully, I'm back. some tests. One of those exciting integration tests run. That robot using my browser. failed. Test failed. That's all right. It's my first attempt running it. Let me make an eyeball it. It's a nice compact little test. Fits all on one page. Ah, uh, oh. Oh. It's looking for the... Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. But... Butts, butts, butts. How about we... Let's do this. See, there's two forms. There's edit item form, there's new item form, and I made those super specific to the new item form, but these also exist on the edit item form. They're not very specific selectors, but they're probably specific enough. Let's try that again. All that uh, beautiful bean footage, or I mean, uh, integration test footage. Yeah, I'm 
my test failed again. Hopefully it failed for a good reason. I should actually, I should be grepping for just that test, so I just run that test over and over, and that's the thing I meant to do earlier in the stream, and I just haven't gotten around to refreshing my brain on it. Oh, no, that's interesting. Oh! I know what I did. I know what I did. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, the edit form comes pre-filled. I'm just sending keys to the fields. So you can see... What I actually edited the thing to say is I didn't delete the original value. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder how you do that. I gotta look that up real quick. Alright, because I know I'm like, uh, Selenium Sem Keys. I have to look up the docs real quick. I thought I had the docs open. I guess not in this browser, though. I have them um, open in some other browser. Send clear, send keys clear field? Excuse me. Anyway, um, is there a clear? This is very stupid. I want to overwrite a value instead of. Send keys control a, mm. Huh, okay, well that, but that's in Python. I want to do this in JavaScript. Okay, but that sounds about right, like, like control A, control A, that's what a human would do, control A, start typing. Well, I guess there's clear. Let me do that. There's actually a dot clear. Where's my test? Where's my test? Yeah, let's do this. I should get the docs back open, though. Well, this isn't what I'm looking for. I just had open like last week and I closed all the tabs. It's in my history somewhere. Oh, but my test passed. Something else failed though. Server terminated early. That's that's bad food bad uh bad mojo. over two hours here. Probably gonna take another pit stop in a minute here. Refill my water, get some coffee. Let you watch some uh, commercials. Not actual commercials though. Like not, not actual, uh, I'm not making any money off them. Oh, well my test passed. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna take a break. I will see you in about Odyssey video game fun. Gotta make sure to actually mute it. The entrance to an alternate world of fire breathing dragons, hard hitting sluggers, arcade wizards, outer space wizards. More than 40 games in all. Odyssey the excitement of a game. The mind of a computer. All for the price of an ordinary video game. Odyssey. As an intelligent consumer, I wanted to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' asteroids. But other companies don't make asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' missile commands. But other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari.
I'm here with an average American homemaker with her own Apple personal computer. Uh, Jill, do you use your Apple for household budgeting? And... Actually, I'm working in gold futures. Oh, well, you could probably put a lot of recipes in there, huh? Mm hmm And you can do trend analyses, generate bar graphs. Are you really you... a homemaker? Well, of course. <laughs> so, Apple is the appliance of the 80s for all those pesky household chores. Hmm? I also own a small steel mill. Apple, the personal computer. Believe what's possible these days? Conversations through your computer? Worlds of information one click away. All the things you find only on the world's most popular internet online service, now more affordable than ever? It's like living in the future. A future now available on America Online. you pretend you're E.T., running away from secret agents, falling into danger, finding a phone to call home, and discovering the best thing on Earth, a friend. E.T., only from Atari. A fly. I'll have a mutant fly. Hello, Yar. You need some protection. Ion zone. Uh-uh. Shift chroma. Intensify. Okay. Now you need some weapons. Mm -hmm. You have a formidable enemy. The Kutai. Watch it, Yar. He has a lethal drone. And some other tricks up his sleeve. Spiral. Move, Yar. No, this is totally know. what making video games looks like. Use it, Yar. Fire again. Got him. <laughs> That's revenge. Yar's revenge. And this could be fun. This could be a lot of fun, like asteroids. Get him. Get him. Now, let's go to deeper space. Galactic map, okay? Sector 11. Hyperspace. Sight in. Cylon warships. It's also too bad that uh, Atari 2600 games didn't look like this. Star Raiders. That's it. Star Raiders. That'll keep them on their toes. Let's see what we can come up with next. We're Atari. We have the vision. And we invented the technology to bring it home to you. Desk is a little neater, not that much neater, but it's a little neater. You can see some of my new toys here. But let's jump back into it. Hey there, Slayer Darth. Doing pretty good. First stream since November. Actually seeing if I can get back into it. See if my new uh, stream setup works. Still tweaking. But maybe I'll actually get back to it. On a consistent basis. Alright, so what am I doing? I'm gonna add... Yeah, alright, let's let's do this already. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add... Modification cancellation. 
Because that's the other half of the, uh... The thing. I don't know if your room seems lighter now or not. It might be. I'm actually... Well, no, I guess I'm streaming kind of around the same time. It is, a, it is actually a new webcam. That might be it. Usually gets, well, I guess it's getting later in the year slightly. So we have a little more sunlight. Cancel add. Oh, we already do add. Oh, we don't cancel add though. Okay, so I have to add canceling an edit and canceling an add. I think those are the two tests that we have to do yet. How does it feel to have wrapped up Firefox Test Pilot? Feels kind of sad, but we had a good run. I think we had a good run. I was on that team for about three years. That project ran for about three years. We got a lot of stuff done. I think in the end it turns out that what Firefox does not in fact need is a continual stream of new features so much as it needs um, folks to take care of fewer features. So when we were projecting things out, I think what we decided is that like if, if, the, if the goal of Firefox is to just keep coming up with features, who takes care of them all? And projecting that out into the future, it just kind of looked unmaintainable. Like we don't need a team whose entire job is to just keep coming up with new things. How many features from Testpilot ended up getting merged? Um, a few. Uh, what I'm working on right now is Lockbox, which is not merged yet, but it is becoming its own product. And that's what I'm starting to help out with now. Screenshots was a Testpilot feature. So now Firefox has a screenshots feature. Um, yeah, take a screenshot. What else did we get merged? We had a few things merged. Um, there's also a few other things that I think are in the works. I want to say we're playing around. So at one point, an experiment we had was called Minvid, which was, um, yeah, the site's down now, so I can't show the old pages, but we were playing around with video, like trying to find ways to like, if you're watching, say, a Twitch stream or a YouTube video to like, do a, like pluck out the video player and have it follow you across tabs. So you could watch a Twitch stream in one tab, then switch to a different tab and have a have like a little video corner video player or maybe an always on top video window. I think Chrome does some of that too, but we wanted to make that more of a built in browser thing. I think that idea might be going forward. Uh, but yeah, I think part of our our general theme for 2019 is um, taking stock of what we have and trying to like double down on the quality of it rather than just coming up with a never ending stream of new stuff. So yeah, we had a good run. Use stream link with MPV. I don't think I have used that. It's that other thing where you can like uh, pipe web video to like whatever player you want. Nice. That's pretty cool. Actually, I should play with that. The other thing that I want to do on the stream a little bit more, depending on what time I carve out for it, is um, to play around with more video of me doing other projects. And I started actually uh, another streamer that I watch a bunch is uh, Kraslin, K-R-A-S-L-I-N, and he just has some like amazing video production crap. Like I feel like that's his hobby is just seeing how much and how varied video he can pump into streaming. 
And he did some cool stuff where he has like multiple cameras. Like I just have two cameras right now. I've got another thing that I want to do where I've got like these two cameras plus a close-up camera on a magazine. It was it was actually I think my last stream. I did typing in magazine listings on a Commodore 64. So I had video capture from the 64 plus these two cameras plus one more camera pointed at a magazine. I might try stuff like that again. But anyway, some of that um, streaming video to your broadcast box from, say, a cell phone comes in very handy. Anyway, just having something that lets you pipe streams around. Sounds like it might be a handy thing for that sort of shenanigans. I also want to get back to doing some uh, arcade machine repair and some electronics. That could be a fun thing to point lots of cameras at things. Oh yeah, it's going to cancel and edit. Yeah, he's good people. Swears a lot. Drinks a lot. Does a lot of pot. But it uh, only uh, fuels his, his shenanigans. He's got kind of an awesome thing where he has like all these stupid toys and every toy has a camera on it and you can issue uh, chat commands to make his toys activate so you can flip them off, you can make a dinosaur stomp. He's got some fun toys on his stream. He just kind of like logs in and just tinkers with crap. Yeah, he's a particularly uh, curmudgeonly programmer. I like him. He's a good guy. is indeed muted. Sorry about that. I need to make it like a push to mute button or something. I don't know. I almost kind of want to get foot pedals for the stream. But anyway, what's your new project? I think the last time I streamed you were doing a thing with like video recognition or something, but that was probably months and months ago. Yeah, so the only difference between these tests is which button we click. I'm going to go ahead and, in the cancellation test, fill out the field, and then cancel. Oh, that project's on the back burner. Yeah. So I'm going to pause real quick. It's okay, I just put it on a, on a pod. Excuse me, have you compared them to Intellivision? Intellivision? Sure, they've got great space games, like Intellivision Space Battle. I didn't know. 
And now the Space Armada and the incredible Astro Snatch. I didn't know. Here, compare for yourself. In television space games from Mattel Electronics. Once you compare, you know. commercial going that was a bit bit much and i just had to take care of something real quick i think i'm gonna go for like another 10 minutes or so and then call it a day it's been about uh two and a half hours that's pretty good for me for a stream especially not having done it since last fall It got moderated, let's let that through. And there's a cat. We took a week off last year holiday and spent it working for the boss that that is great I hope you didn't get timed out I saw auto mod popped up while I was distracted and I allowed it hopefully you didn't get uh, timed out I don't even remember what it like objected to But I'm just gonna have to write my own. Okay, so this is what I wanna do. And now the cats are going crazy. Yeah, I really have like 10 minutes left, I think, but I need to call it. It's. Businesses are closing early. Actually, it's gonna be, uh. <laughs> it's gonna be, believe it or not, a state of emergency tomorrow where I live for snow. So we need, we need to go, uh, get food and, uh,. Get ready to batten the hatches and all that fun stuff. Maybe I can finish this real quick. Does this cancel button have an ID? This cancel button doesn't have an ID. Damn it. I would like to... I, see, I, I goofed myself by... Uh, Canceling my previous pull request so I could expand it to add this modification stuff. So I may not end the day with a pull request. Let's try this. I'm gonna add. Uh, I was on a roll and I'm all distracted. So we're editing an item. And I want to hit the cancel button. Let's say 
Last name. Item edit cancel. Does that fit the form we were doing up here? Kinda does, kinda doesn't. What's that an ID actually? Proxy API access the middleman between client and the server. Hmm. This should be interesting. Edit item. Wait, no, let's follow our naming thing here. Look at a vague naming pattern or pattern. Started here. Edit item. Cancel button. which just runs the build process. Let's see, we want a uh, const cancel button. Wait, wait for selectors. Yeah, come on. Item, what do they call it? Item form submit. Oh, you know what, I don't need to do that. Huh, actually, that's probably not exactly what I wanted to do. We'll probably be fine. Maybe I don't want an ID here. Yeah, maybe I do. Never mind. Edit item cancel button. Edit item cancel button. Let's grab a reference to that. Let's click that button. of the difference comes in. This is probably something else that I can pull out. Let's say, uh, const com modify conv verify. And I'm gonna say, um, item data. This here's what we're gonna do. Actually, edit the field should reflect the edit. Where is my edited fields? Oh, I see, I put it up here. That is incorrect. Let's do this. This code is going to break. Here's a difference in buttons and then the end state. It's a different set of data. So instead of a little bit of refactoring. Okay. I was kind of coded all that blind. I'm sure I broke something. Oh yeah, that should be uh, async function.
Lint is very picky. Refinning these. Okay. Let's see if my test passes. If this test passes, I think this is about where I'm gonna call it. Thank you. 